Hi gang, this video is to supplement the creation of your default desk for AVM1 and um, I'm just going to have my video up here for a moment while we get started. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is visit Melda Productions and we're going to download their installer. And if you're Mac or Windows, get version 14. I've already downloaded that and put it on my desktop here. You'll also want to visit TP Pro Audio and view their products you can download um mv meter it's going to back up again here's mv meter 2 this is a great little stereo um metering program for your master fader both these installers and programs are free so um that's why i'm asking you to install them for your default desk project so those are already downloaded here they are and we might as well run the installers <clears throat> and let's see here we will install yes i agree next personally i want to keep all this i don't have any vst apps so i'm just going to do the aax plugins which is the format for pro tools if you use um another daw like um, reaper or something that uses vst plugins feel free to leave install those and these are all the plugins I believe the green ones are free so what I like to do is none none are selected right now so find the plugin called m loudness analyzer and select that one plugin is selected and let's install it it's just telling me on Windows to tell me where it's going to stick it go A lot of messing around for one plugin. All right, we're done with that plugin, and now we'll install the MV meter. This initially was a zip file that I've unzipped just to save a moment here. I believe I already have this plugin installed, so it's going to complain. And again, I only want the for me the 64-bit AAX for Pro Tools. Cool. It just over overwrote the one that I already had installed. Oh, here you go. Uh, try again to overwrite it. Interesting. This worked the other day just fine. Of course whenever I'm recording it for class it never works all right I'm gonna skip it I, I believe it's this is because I already have um, have this installed all right um, all right so now I'm gonna launch up uh, Pro Tools and I'm gonna get rid of my video so you don't have to look at me anymore all right so this is a, a blank Pro Tools session and uh, the first thing we're going to do is create a new project this comes up I'm going to rename this default desk now I'm going to move very quickly through this video and the reason I'm doing that is we've already covered all, all of this in class broadcast wave 24 bit 48 last use interleaved prompt for location by default I believe this wants to save it under documents but I want to save it on the desktop right now and I'm on my desktop and it's called default desk pro tools save it what that should have done now hide this let's create a folder on the desktop there it is called default desk so back to pro tools all right so um once we've done that let's go to setup session setup session and make sure we have the correct settings from the handout 48k we already took care of this stuff broadcast wave make sure interleave is checked and these may be at some other frame rate um, always change them right now for our class to 23.976 all you can change all of these no harm only the first one really counts if the other two are, are extra and here's session start make sure that's at zero sometimes out of the box 
Pro Tools will have a session start time of like one hour. And that's not what we want for this class. The rest of these should all be fine right where they were. So once we've taken care of that, we're good. Next, go to your setup I.O. Depending on your audio interface and how many tracks and channels you have of I.O., your setup might look a little different. Right now, I'm using a, a virtual audio interface that has um, 8 in and 8 out. Now, this will kind of freak you out a little bit, but when I started the Fault Desk, here's what I always do. I highlight all of these and delete them. What? Yeah, it's okay. Just delete them. Go to the outputs, highlight all of them, and delete them. For the buses, same thing. Highlight all of them and delete them. We are now starting with a very clean slate. And the reason I like to do that is because this way I'm guaranteed that everything that gets routed around in my Pro Tools desk, I have specifically made it do that. So on the input, let's just create a stereo microphone. And we'll call this mic stereo. Okay. And under the stereo microphone, I'm going to create two new subpaths. One, two. All right. And I'm going to call this one mic one and mic two. Again, in class, I discuss the reasons why we do this or why I like to do it. On the output, I'm going to create a new path. I'm going to make it stereo. And I'm going to call this interface output. Now, when I'm at home, the interface output is going to be connected to my PreSonus interface. When I'm on this virtual thing, it's going to be uh, this, this voice meter plugin. If you happen to go down to the studio to do work, it, you may be connecting to some Pro Tools HD hardware. Interface output is the main output of your mixing, mixing, mixing desk. Um, it will be connected virtually here under buses to something else maybe over here so today I'm, I might connect this at home to my uh, virtual interface and if I come down to the studio this will say used to be connected to virtual interface where do you want to connect it now and maybe PreSonus or Avid or something else will be under there if you don't do that you won't hear any audio now all of the studios at 33 East Congress have uh, left and right coming out of one and two that is not the case universally in fact if you were to go to the film department left and right is set up that's interesting okay, there we go left skip right and that's because of surround sound mixing left center right different facilities have different wiring setups at at 33's congress we are all on one and two is our main output so for buses let's create a record bus one stereo record bus and let's auto create the sub pads and it'll create mono one and mono two for us. You are mono one, you are mono two. Yes. Okay. Um, and if we look at the handout, I can continue creating additional buses. So I've got my record bus, I've got um, three stereo buses that we will call our um, reverbs. And then I shall rename these. This will be DTX reverb. This will be sound effects reverb. And this is music reverb. And then we have after reverb, we're going to create three new. I could make these all at once, but it helps me to split them up like this into little groups. This will be our submixes. So you are VTX submix, tab, sound effects submix, tab, music submix. All right, that takes care of those. What else do we have? We have a two mix bus. Let's create that. I need one, whoops, one stereo. Dang, that didn't go quite as planned. I must said 12 or something. Highlight all of those and just delete them. You know, I deliberately make all these mistakes just to show you how it gets done. All right, one stereo 
and this is going to be our two point mix bus and what else do we need our print tracks so we need four print tracks we have four stereo we can just leave them like that for now this one will be um mix print tab voice track btx print tab sound effects print tab music print for all of our individual submixes on this project and we have six one two three four five six yep all right we're good so we've now created all the buses that we need for this project and we've created the input and the outputs another thing that's nice to do is you know when you go to use an audio suite plugin and you want to audition the sound of it um you need to you need to tell pro tools when i go to audition a sound that is not on my desk like an audio suite plugin preview or over in the clip list when you option click on an audio file to play it before you drag it into the timeline where's that audio supposed to feed so down here that's called the audition path and you can set the audition path to the interface output in fact we can set our monitor path to the interface output too so if you set these to the interface output audio that is not on your desk will also feed the interface output so you can hear it like when you're auditioning things all right i believe we are done with that for now um after that i'm just flipping through my pages here make sure i don't miss anything next up we can start creating some tracks so let's go to track new and let's create two mono augs inputs those will be for our microphones and let's create for now let's create an audio track for um recording those for voice tracks let's create a stereo reverb that will be an augs let's create a stereo augs that will be our submix let's create our master fader as we discussed in class i'm always using augs i am not using the master fader function on pro tools because of some limitations that i don't like so augs and this is also stereo and then the last thing i need is a stereo audio print so this will give us everything we need in one swoop for the um audio elements we've got the mic inputs a couple of them we've got a track to record our voice tracks we've got a reverb return we've got a submix we've got the master fader and we've got a print all right at this point i'm going to switch us over to the desk where it's a little easier to work um, and let's name these so this is mic one and control or command arrow right on the map moves you next to the next one this is mic two this will be vtx one then we've got vtx verb for the reverb return and then we have vtx submix we've got our master fader and we have our vtx print all right hang on for the ride here as we go through connecting all these this gets connected to microphone number one this gets connected to microphone two hey look there's my mic so let's mute these for now and um actually i don't even want to see them it's distracting pull them down there oh that doesn't get rid of them nothing gets rid of them so it goes all right let's route these to the mono bus mono one mono one the vtx audio track gets fed by not the microphone but by mono one it goes out to the voice track submix the reverb gets fed by the reverb send vtx reverb which is a good reminder that now would be a fine time to insert the reverb send bus vtx reverb we now have a reverb send and if you remember if you come up to view sends 
expanded sends we want to look at just send a it expands that up there all right so reverb the reverb gets fed by the reverb bus it goes out to the sound effects submix let's put a plugin on here so we don't forget btx verb and i'm just going to pick the air reverb all right the submix track gets fed by the voice track submix it goes out to the vtx it goes to two places it's going to go to um, the vtx print and if we hold the on a mac you hold the control key on windows you hold the hmm the windows key or the alt key alt you can add buses so i'm going to add in the 2.0 mix let's see if this worked right nope crap and i don't think you can command z that I should have uh, done a save first so now i have to go back and do all my outputs so what did i hold i held alt which is like holding option i really want to hold windows which is like holding control on the mac i, used to, I had a mac for decades and now i've had this computer about a year all right so output mono one output mono one you get fed by mono one that goes to the vtx submix this goes to the vtx submix the vtx submix gets fed by the vtx submix and it goes out to two places as we discussed it goes to the vtx print then you hold the command or the windows key on a windows computer and you would select the additional two mix bus that gives us the little plus sign if we hold the cursor over it it tells me the output of your submix fader is going to two places the 2.0 mix and the mix print the master fader gets fed by the mix print it goes to the interface output and the print track gets fed by the vtx print and it goes out to the interface output and it gets muted good now if i take track one and i set it on input the microphone should be feeding it and you can see all the tracks light up it tells me my signal is being routed everywhere let's add a little reverb to it reverb, reverb reverb all right so that's working good job let's add one more track here new track and this one will be stereo audio track i'm going to move it over one here because i like the order of my things and we will call this the mix print mix print gets fed by the output of the master fader or the print um, bus so we select mix print it goes to the interface output it gets muted it gets inputted then on the master fader i'm going to hold uh, the control key on a mac windows key on a windows computer and i'm going to add to the output path the mix print so now again if i turn a microphone on we should see it light up all those faders yep yep good so that's all good so far now that was for um vtx now we need to create um some new faders for the sound effects mono and stereo and music so let's click here i want all those tracks to come afterwards so i'm going to create a new i need a mono audio track for sound effects i need a stereo track audio track for sound effects i need a reverb augs for the return of the reverb i need a submix that's an augs and i need a print that's an audio go let's name all these before i forget them you are um sound effects these these are uh, sound effects hard track one next up oh, you know what i remember how i was naming these in class i'm gonna go hard 
sound effects one and the next one is background sound effects one after that is the sound effects verb sound effects submix and sound effects print all right let's route these around my sound effects tracks everybody I love to get fed by the mono so if I need to record some Foley sound effects in the stereo track will get fed by the stereo um, the sound effects gets fed by the sound effects verb the submix gets fed by the submix and the print gets fed by the sound effects print all right now let's do the outputs the output goes to the sound effects submix let's stick a send on here sound effects reverb the stereo sound effects track also goes to the sound effects submix the reverb gets fed to the sound effects submix 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 and the sound effects submix gets fed to two places it gets fed to the sound effects print hold the control key the windows key on a windows computer and take that submix fader and also route it to the 2.0 mix bus we got a little plus sign check it out we're good this gets inputted and muted all right let's put these things in the right order sound effects print whoa 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 sound effects print ends up over with all the other prints submix and reverbs where is my there it is voice track reverb okay what I like you, you know how I like to have it audio tracks submix submix no those are actually backwards I like to have the verbs then the submix so now if I take my sound effects track and I put that on input good good I see sound effects submix I see it going to the master master print and there put some reverb on it reverb sorry about that all right good I can do the stereo one side of it good all right next up some music tracks click here on my last audio track and track new let's just make our stereo audio track for music then we need a stereo augs for the reverb return we need another stereo augs for the submix fader and then we need a stereo audio for the print now could I have just merged these together yes but in my head I'm imagining the flow of the console from left to right and that's why I like creating each individual fader to as I as I think through the process of what's needed um that's why they do that plus when I create them they're in the right order on the desk that I want so you now are music one you are music verb next up is music submix and finally is music print let's set the inputs on these four tracks the input to the music gets fed by the record bus the input to the reverb gets fed by the music reverb let's add our send while we're thinking of it music reverb the input to the submix gets fed by the submix for music music submix the input to the print gets fed by music print let's look at the outputs the music output goes to submix so the next three all go to submix the verb goes to submix the submix goes to two places the submix goes to the print for music and by holding down the control or the windows key on a windows computer i also select the bus for 2.0 mix that goes to two places the music print does go to the interface output i go to input i get muted let's move it over i keep moving all of them sorry there we go and let's put the music track on input we'll see signal on one side good and we're seeing it feed uh oh that's not right it's feeding the sound effects submix what did I do wrong here 
the music is feeding the sound effect submix that is wrong the music should be feeding the music submix is it right now uh, music submix is in the wrong place let's move it with all the other submixes good let's move the reverb in the right order so it goes voice sound effects music verb let's add some reverb try not the feedback this time good good and so music is tickling the music submix which is doing the mix print master and music that all looks very good all right next up after we've done all our busting let's say creating a 2b the, um, that reminds me also speaking of plugins I should copy this reverb to the other two reverb sends and a nice easy way to do that on a Mac is option send or on a PC it's alt send alt drag I mean so there there's our three reverbs and then on the master fader here I want to insert three plugins I want to insert first under compression maxim maxim gets set to minus eight tab minus eight tab and put it in bypass done with that next up I like to generally put the um, MV meter so that would be where they TP something was the name of that place here it is TP pro audio MV meter set the MV meters input at minus 20 good that's it for that plugin the last plug and that can stay active that's not draining any resources it's not processing the signal under melda do you see melda here I don't see melda well that makes me a little nervous sound field well it seems like maybe that plugin did not get installed properly did I not do it right all right so let's save where we are saving my default desk we'll quit this launch the melda again <clears throat> I don't remember any error any errors with this plugin one is selected you know did I not hit install or something loudness meter go no I remember it did all that installation was successfully completed here's our fault desk let's open it up you know I think maybe I had pro tools already running to save time and that's why the plugin wasn't installed properly it was it wasn't read yet by pro tools that must be what I did all right well it's good to know that I made a mistake at least that makes sense all right so put this in bypass good it was already went back to bypass so here we come again the, come on Melda there's Melda good old Melda all right a couple settings we need to adjust here I just want to make sure on the presets we're on default that looks good and then under target instead of minus 23 we want minus 24 and under offset we want minus 24 and that's it I hate looking at this little thing so I like to close it down this meter is now all calibrated that's all you need to do for now all right good job got that what's next let's do um our two beep track so I like to put the true two beep up here at the top so we'll create a new track track new it's an audio track it can be in mono I'm going to name it right away two beep The 2 beep gets routed to a whole bunch of places. In addition to the interface output, it goes to all the print tracks. So I'm going to hold the command key, uh, control key on a Mac or the Windows key on a PC, and I'm going to keep adding in the four prints. So here's the mix print. I'm still holding the control key. VTX print, 
still holding the control key, sound effects print, music print, oh, and I believe I need to go to the, did I get the mix print? One, two, three, four, yep, that's it, I believe that's all of them. All right, let me check my documentation, make sure. One, two, three, four, five places, that's correct. If I mouse over this, it'll tell us it's going to five places. The interface output, four prints, cool. Now, let's, this is the rare time we'll head back to the audio for this. I'm going to go to roughly 58 seconds. 5800. Delete. 5800. Here we are at 58 seconds. By holding the shift key and dragging, I can highlight a second of audio. That's actually way too much audio, so let's zoom in here. And I want to highlight, there we go. There's a second of audio. How do I know it's a second of audio? Because if I look here under length, it says one second. I want to fill that one second of audio with um, 1K tone. Signal generator, render, 1K tone. Cool. I only need one frame of this 1K tone. So make sure my nudge value is set to one frame. Tab up to the beginning of it and nudge. I'm going to zoom in. Separate the region with a B. Take this back end. Pull the volume all the way down. And give this a listen make sure it's a two beep i gotta hear it here let me turn my volume play that's a two beep all right now that we have the two beep i'm going to consolidate the regions zoom in highlight that back highlight that consolidate the region with a shift option three on a mac or a control alt three on a pc no control windows three uh windows all three. Oh come on that's interesting oh my command keys are off over here how'd that happen interesting all right so you go to clip consolidate the region yeah what's going on here oh they're not highlighted Sorry, I'm having a brain fart here. Why am I not able to consolidate this? Oh, because I'm using the wrong command key. There we go. Shift all three. I don't know what the heck I was hitting. All right, here's my 2B. Let's name it just 2B. Cool. That two beep belongs at 58 seconds. So I can nudge it there. It's one frame off right now. There it is. And I'm going to zoom way in here. I'm going to spot this at high accuracy. I, I may not show this in class, but if you really want to get it in the exact place, you go to subframes, see it's off by half a subframe. So you can delete all that. Delete and go to 58, 0, 0, 0, 0. And there it is exactly at 58 seconds. Once it's there, I'm going to lock it with a control L and you can see it puts a little padlock on it. And now I'm going to, I don't know why I keep turning, how this keeps turning off my, all right, I'm going to loop it. Uh, looping is off, turn looping on, secondary click, loop, highlight. And while it's looping, Hey, you're not looping. What's going on here? Loop. All right, while it's looping, I'm going to look at my print tracks and make sure that it's feeding all the print tracks. And it is. And we're hearing it out of the interface output. Cool. The two beep is now going everywhere it needs to go. That is a good thing. Stop. All right, now that we've created our two beep track, let me look at my notes here. We did that. Let's add some input plugins on our microphones. You always want to be ready to record on your microphones. Um, let's see. We're going to pick some standard um, Avid EQ7. Yes, EQ7. Where are you? There it is. Um, 
I always like to roll off a little bit of bottom end on my EQ let's stick that in make it pretty harsh this just gets rid of any room rumble when I go to record a voiceover good and then I also like to add a little compressor so let's add a generic you can replace these with whatever your favorite um compressor is on your default desk even if I don't have it don't worry about it um let's see not that familiar with the avid plugins but that looks like a good one and I like to set the threshold to like minus eight just as to protect the microphone from dramatic overloads and I want to set the ratio to two to one so I'm pretty sure I'm not going to hear two to one that should be, shouldn't be a problem all right now that those are in the circuit you can mute them on the Mac by hitting option and on the Windows computer it is hitting the Windows key now I want to copy those to the other microphone so I can option drag or alt drag on a PC and there we go that's exactly that's it they're there they're ready to go that's all I need to do there looking at our little handout what's next we did the mastering plugins solo isolating and if you remember the rule for solo isolating is if it has a record button on it it does not get solo isolated so to solo isolate on a mac you command click on the solo button on a on a uh, pc it's control that has a record button leave them alone um Whether you do these audio tracks is neither here nor there. You can leave them. They have record buttons on them. Let's stick with that rule. Uh, our big sound effects, I can just look here and see. It's missing a reverb send. I forgot that. So there we go. Were some of you noticing that and thinking, he's not going to remember it and I'm going to call him out on it? Sorry. All right. So we did all the um, solo isolates. That's good. All right. Let me look at the final page here of our handout. I've got. Uh, the tracks connected we did reverb solo isolated we didn't do the color coding yet let's do that now you might notice I've only created one voice one sound effects for mono stereo in this we're going to duplicate these tracks once we're all set so I always like my voice tracks to be red so I'm going to hold the shift not shift key I think the control key yes and select anything that has to do with voices like the reverb like the submix and like the print and I'm gonna make all of those red so they're easy for me to find my sound effects I like those to be blue so I'm gonna hold the um, control key on a PC I think it's you'll be holding option on a Mac and anything that has to do with sound effects sound effects sound effects submix sound effects print I'm gonna make those blue my music I like those to be gold how about that gold that looks good all right so select everything that has to do with music music submix music print and make those gold cool anything that's left microphones two beep master fader make them some dark color that doesn't have anything to do with anything cool now that I've got the tracks color coded I need to make sure that the um under preferences set up preferences huh, how come I can't select preferences do I have a dialogue open or something set up I'm probably running am I still looping yeah there it is stop set up preferences and go to colors here under display and make sure that the clip color gets picked up by the track color if it's set to this you regardless of how nice you set your colors over here the clips will not pick up the color so make sure the clips pick up the track color cool all right we got our two beep set what else is there we can start duplicating tracks now to fulfill the requirement of I believe 28 tracks we need yep 28 faders all so for voice tracks we need three more copies of this secondary click duplicate it give me three of them and let's name them VTX 2 VTX 3 VTX 4 
On hard sound effects, we need three more copies of that. Duplicate. Give me three of them. First one is going to be called hard sound effects two. Hard sound effects three. And hard sound effects four. Cool. Then we've got background sound effects. Three copies of that. Duplicate. Give me three of them. Let's rename them. Background sound effects two. Background sound effects three. Background sound effects four. Done. And music, I only need one copy of that. So let's just duplicate it, make one of them, and rename it two. Sweet. Now, that's it. Let's see how many faders we have. In this instance, it helps to look at the... I'm not a big fan of narrow mix, but it will help us count the faders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did I do that right? Yep, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, 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 forty